So I was looking at the Dungeon Master's Guide the other day, and I was reminded just how long-lived demi-humans are. And I thought I'd uh, kick around some of the implications of that when it comes to the world of Greyhawk, today on Greyhawk Grognard. <laughs> And we're doing something new uh, with this video. This is going to be the first video that my Patreon supporters got to see uh, uh, earlier than the rest of the world. So if you want to see these videos a couple weeks early, um, be sure to hit up the, uh, the Patreon. You'll find the link below. Anyway, um, so in the world of Greyhawk, we know that there are demi-human kingdoms, right? There's the three Ulic states, there's Selene, uh, there are the elves out in the Spindrift Isles, um, and that's pretty much it when it comes to lands that are, oh, uh, High Folk uh, has a lot of elves and, and such there. Uh, but that's pretty much it when it comes to established realms uh, that are led by demi-humans. Uh, and uh, in the AD&D world, don't forget there's a difference between demi-humans and humanoids. Demi-humans are the friendly ones. Elves, dwarves, gnomes, halflings, um, and humanoids are the orcs and goblins and, and so forth. So when I, make, when I say demi-humans, I'm, I'm being expansive within that, um, that, that list. Um, but we don't really see any other realms. I mean, there's, there's obviously, there are elves elsewhere. There are elves in all the big forests and so forth, but in terms of established kingdoms, it's really a, a, a small list. Um, now, bear in mind that according to the DM's guide, demi-humans live to be, or can live, I should say, can live to be enormous spans of time longer than humans. So for example, dwarves, uh, old dwarves can be 350 or 400 years old, and they can even live beyond that uh, to become venerable. Uh, elves are either 1,000 or 1,500 or 1,200 or 1,100, but they can, but the gray elves can actually live as long as 2,000 years. Um, which of course differentiates them from Tolkien's elves who are literally immortal um, unless they're killed by violence, but um, but I mean, two thousand for all intents and purposes, when you're talking about a campaign setting whose history only goes back a little over a thousand years, that is forever. Um, gnomes live for six hundred years, half elves for two fifty, um, halflings one hundred and forty four. So I mean, everybody lives longer than humans on average. Um, which is kind of weird because when we what we learn about the demi-human kingdoms that are out there, uh, for example, Ulic, the three Ulic states, and um, uh, Selene, they're only a hundred, little over a hundred years old. Um, so, the demi-humans who have lived there have lived there for long, long before there was actually an established country. Um, and it's a fair bet that, barring violence, the current rulers are the ones who have who founded it because there's there's no real uh, lifespan uh, limitation when it comes to a hundred years for most of these uh, demi-human races is really not much. Uh, halflings would probably you know you'd probably see some turnover there because they're they're only they only live to be 199. At, at most, but um, uh, but uh, you know, for the for the rest of them, especially for the Elven uh, kingdoms and, and such, uh, it is a fair bet that whoever is in charge now was the person who was in charge at the beginning. Um, and this, I think, has some implications because it, you know, other than un unlike a human kingdom, a uh, a demi-human kingdom with a ruler with such a long lifespan is going to have a level of continuity that you're not going to see in other. Uh, in other realms, um, you know, when you have constant turnover, <coughs> excuse me, I am, I've been sick all week. When you have constant turnover um, of, of rulers and, and so forth, you're going to lose a lot of the continuity. You're going to have people coming in with new ideas. There's going to be a lot more change and churn than you're going to see in a stable kingdom that's had the same ruler for over a hundred years um, and has no inclination to change. So, in that respect, I think you can you can infer that those kingdoms in the around the Lortmill Mountains, those demi-human realms, are 
going to be a lot more inherently conservative, not in a political sense, but in a cultural sense, um, than uh, than the the human kingdoms around them. I mean, just look at the at, at how much. Uh, Kaoland has changed in that same course of time. I mean, it went from being a a, a very good aligned nation to a, an imperial power that was dominating all its neighbors, and then it pulled back. You don't see those big swings in uh, in the same way. The swings in policy, the swings in attitude um, among the Ulic states or or Saline. Um, now you get a very different thing in the Spindrift Islands because we don't really know a lot about the history of, of the elves there, um, but we we do know that they've been there as long as humans have been there, so it, you know they probably go back much, much, much farther, um, And but they're also very isolationist, and later on they kind of took them in a more Tolkien-y direction uh, where, where the elves are leaving the world of men, and they do it through a special gate in the Spindrift Isles, or the Lendor Isles, um, uh, you know the the name shifts from from, from era to era, um, but uh, in that in that sense, um, the elves in the uh, in the Spindrift Isles are um, much more uh, rooted in the ancient past and have actually seen so much of human history uh, go by during their tenure um, and and their their rulership in isolation. And that actually brings me to a, another point about the implications of these long uh, spans of, of time. Um, when we're talking about elves who could, in theory, live 2,000 years, it is entirely possible that there are um, gray elves out there who were 1,000 years old at the time of the invoked devastation uh, and the twin cataclysms. There are elves uh, out there who have literally seen the entirety of human civilization in the Flaness come uh, uh, to come to fruition from the migrations of the Iridians, uh, the destruction of the Sul and Baklunish nations, uh, the, the migrations, the encounters with the Flané. They, they have seen, literally been there to watch it all happen. Um, because the time uh, between the, uh, the Twin Cataclysms and 576 of the Common Year uh, was a, a little over a thousand years. So there are literally elves and um, uh, uh, there, are, there are literally elves out there who, who have seen that in the entire history that we know of happen. Um, and that has a lot of implications. You know, obviously uh, dwarves and, and gnomes and stuff haven't, got, haven't quite as long a lifespan, but they still have been around for centuries and centuries. So things that have been completely forgotten by humans are in living memory of elves and gnomes and dwarves. Um, you know, think, uh, uh, oh, this monastery uh, was ruined 500 years ago. <coughs> well, that doesn't mean anything to an elf who lives 2,000 years. It's like me remembering the McDonald's that was on on a particular street when I was uh, when I was in college. You know, it's it's like yeah, I know, I I, I visited that place. I I've been there. Um, so you it, you gotta have that bear that in mind when when we're setting up as DMs when we're setting up all these you know ancient lost mysterious things. Um, we should always keep in the back of our minds that there are going to be some. Uh, demi humans out there who probably were there or at least knew of it um, the 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 lost temple of Tharazdun for example um, you know that that's in living memory of the elves of high folk um, you know it's just there there's no getting around it it's the implication of the uh, of what's baked into the into the rules um, you know same thing with the tomb of horrors there there are going to be um, there are going to be elves uh, around there that were, you know, that were th that were alive when it was constructed. There are going to be elves who remember um, uh, Vecna <laughs> because they were they, you know, they just lived that long. Uh, so I mean, it, it, it's it'll be very interesting. Uh, it would be very interesting to contemplate how to incorporate that, um, you know, rather than going to sages um, or, or looking for old scrolls to get information. Uh, it could be very interesting to 
uh, to have the if, if the PCs know they're going to a particularly old ruined place, uh, it would be interesting for them to first go on a quest to find a particular elf that they know lived nearby at the time and get information from that person um, as a way of prepping for the adventure. Um, you can you, you could have a whole side quest leading up to things that looking for eyewitnesses to things like let's say the the lost uh, Sewell city that supposed to be in the um, uh, 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 near near the wild coast um, you, you're supposed you know you there's going to be people in Celine who used to visit there that you know it has to be because they live that long uh, you know so there are a lot of ways you could work that in as sources of information as guides I mean uh, you, you could have a uh, imagine having a 1500 year old uh, elf as a guide it would be old so you're 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 taking this really old and decrepit person with you on an expedition and you know they could have all kinds of demands and they they could slow you down they could be a burden but they're also an invaluable source of info um you know they could uh, you know they could point you in the right direction oh yes i remember this i remember this mountain here and and so forth i mean there's, there's a, but you know they could demand that they're being carried on a, in a litter um you know so you have to deal with that logistically getting them through the woods and stuff there's there's a lot of ways you could play this uh in turn you know as opportunities for role playing if um you know if these very old um uh, characters are being used as infor information sources or guides uh, then you give them all kinds of crazy personality quirks uh, you, you make them very demanding you make them childish maybe their their memory is, go is going and they need to uh, have a jog somehow or they're you know there's all kinds of different things or you know what do they want uh, at their age they're probably not going to want more uh, money they might want something for their descendants um, you know, you have to promise to, to take my great granddaughter on as an apprentice or something. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can work that in. So um, I, I think it's it's not necessarily a bad thing, and it's not necessarily a um, a downside that demi humans have these long lifespans because I think it gives you eno yet another arrow in your quiver to be able to pass information to your players about ruins and things like that and also an opportunity uh, to to turn it from a simple oh yes you find a scroll with this information in it or you uh, you hear some rumors in the tavern you actually have an opportunity to turn it into a uh, a very rich role-playing experience with a well-defined um, uh, NPC uh, that you you can actually have as a recurring uh, uh, character for the same purpose, and they could just keep coming back, and you know you, you could establish this kind of rapport. So, anyway, um, that's you know that, that those are my thoughts on the um, on the uh, uh, the idea that demi humans have a much longer lifespan, and that has an impact on your on on the campaign as a whole. Um, if you liked this video, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe. Um, uh, you'll find uh, below the link to the Patreon. You'll find the link to my web store. You'll find a link to the blog with all kinds of free downloads on it. Um, and thank you all, uh, all my patrons, uh, Patreons. Uh, you, you help make all these uh, things possible. And thanks to everybody else. And have a great day. Let me know what you think in the comments.